Matt Nagy, the head coach, as expected, is out. Ryan Pace, the GM, as expected, is out. Yo, guys, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to another video. Now, today, we're going to take a look at some possible head coaching candidates for the Chicago Bears. Now, it seems like we have been linked to every offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, former head coach, and I don't mind that. I like having a ton of options here, but I wanted to kind of dissect and give you my opinion on each head coach, go over some of their history, and then at the end of the video, tell you who I hope or maybe I'll give you a couple options that I hope the Chicago Bears do name as their next head coach. Now I'm aware we need to find ourselves a general manager. You'd assume you get a general manager first and then let him have an opinion on who your head coach is going to be. But my general manager video will be out tomorrow. So anyways, with that being said, let's dive into some of our head coaching options. Starting with Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, he is a former player and coached under Andy Reid, Bill Parcells, and Bruce Arians. Three very impressive names there. He was also the head coach of the Jets from 2015 to 2018 and finished 24 and 40. Now, that is a scary number, I understand, but it is the New York Jets. And I mean, that was the Sam Darnold error. So I don't know how much you can put that on him. Tampa Bay's defense is phenomenal. I know they have a ton of talent. But if you watched that Super Bowl last year and saw what he did to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense, you understand why this guy's name is such a hot candidate. Up next is another defensive coordinator, Matt Uber, Uberfest. Sorry, I may, I, no, I, th I think I nailed that. He is the defensive coordinator currently of the Indianapolis Colts. There is not a ton of history on him. He is a defensive specialist, I believe with linebackers as well. He took their defense, which was ranked 30th, all the way to 10th. So that is very impressive within itself. Obviously, the Colts did not make the playoffs this year, but his name is still very popular. As for this next candidate, I guess if you can't beat them, you might as well join them or sign one of their coordinators. Nathaniel Hackett, the offensive coordinator of the Packers. His father coached. He is known for having a very good run game, a really smart football mind, and that was coming from Aaron Rodgers, who did say that he would endorse Hackett as a future head coach somewhere. You imagine only it's a matter of time. Now, my one fear is how much of that is Hackett, or is it just Aaron Rodgers being Rodgers? It's also important to note that he doesn't actually call the plays. Matt LaFleur does. Moving forward, Byron Leftwich of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and one of my favorites. And I know what you're thinking. He is Tom Brady. It's Brady, right? Like, okay, how much can you give him credit for that? But Bruce Arians actually said before he took the Tampa Bay job that he was not going to become their head coach unless Leftwich was their offensive coordinator. Also... When he had Jameis Winston for just a season, Winston put up remarkable numbers. I know he turned the ball over 30 times or whatever it was, but still, the production he got out of Jameis Winston is something that needs to be talked about. I think the success that Byron Leftwich could have with Justin Fields and our offense is something to get excited about for Chicago fans. And speaking of offense, we have another offensive coordinator, this time Brian Dable of the Buffalo Bills. Now he is part of the Bill Belichick chain. I believe he spent nine years in New England and actually coached uh, one season, I think it was 2017, with Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide as their offensive coordinator. A lot of the hype surrounding Brian Dable is the development of Josh Allen into one of the best quarterbacks we have in the league right now. It is important to mention that he did lack success elsewhere with Cleveland, Miami, and KC as their offensive coordinators. People also, this is not something that I just came up with. I've seen this all over the internet. And I never really understood until I did some research. But there are people that refer to him as the fat Matt Nagy because there are times where he just abandons the run game and becomes very, very pass happy. And probably one of the hottest names right now and one of the biggest surprises of Black Monday is Brian Flores, the former Miami Dolphins head coach. He was a former Patriots scout, worked his way up there for 15 years, never was an offense or defensive coordinator with New England, but did call plays versus the Rams in the Super Bowl and held them to just three points. There is no denying that he is an incredible defensive coach. There are issues and rumors surrounding his relationships with quarterbacks in the front office in Miami, leading to his firing. I don't agree with Miami firing him. I just don't think that was the smart idea whatsoever. And I think you make the case that Chicago has a more talented roster than Miami, and our defense would probably become top five. 
I do have my concerns on offense, but I think he would be a great cultural change for Chicago. I think that locker room would rally around him and really get us back to where we want to be. Another name that is very familiar with Chicago Bears fans is Leslie Frazier, the defensive coordinator for the Bills. Of course, he was a former Bear and actually won the Super Bowl with them in 1985. He is part of the Andy Reid coaching tree and was the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings where he went 21 and 32. He did, however, go 10 and 6 one year and did win coach of the year. Maybe it's because I've already seen him as a head coach in our division that this move doesn't intrigue me as much as some of the others. Speaking of former head coaches, Dan Quinn is another candidate, the current defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys and, of course, former Atlanta Falcons head coach. He was 43 and 42 as their head coach and took them to a Super Bowl and, of course, spent time with Seattle as their defensive coordinator for two years. I don't know about a head coach. I'm going to be honest. I think he is one of the best defensive coaches and the stuff that he's done with that Dallas defense in just one season is quite remarkable. I, I just think maybe there's, uh, I think there's some guys out there that are maybe meant to be coordinators instead of coaches. No offense to Dan Quinn. The fact that he rocks the backwards hat, like, I love it, man. I, I love the energy he brings, but I just think he's a better defensive corner than head coach. And then, of course, maybe the most popular name here, or maybe the most controversial name, Doug Peterson or Matt Nagy 2.0. Well, kind of. Matt Nagy with more success, I should say. Former Eagles head coach was 46-39-1, won a Super Bowl, of course, and was 4-2 in the playoffs. He learned under Andy Reid himself and was a former quarterback. Now, where it gets interesting here is Doug Peterson spent time during training camp with the Chicago Bears. Him and Matt Nagy are friends, of course. I think they run a quite similar scheme on offense, but obviously Peterson has had a lot more success. I don't know how Doug Peterson would sit with Chicago. Like, I, I'm not sure if the fan base would embrace him. I think they want to change and I think there's just too much of Doug Peterson they, that they see in Matt Nagy. Now, saying that, of course, he is the only one here that's won a Super Bowl as a head coach. So that is intriguing within itself. And I know you want me to talk about Jim Harbaugh. I just don't see it happening. I don't think he leaves the Wolverines. I have heard rumors they're trying to extend him after he made the college football playoff. Don't get me wrong. Jim Harbaugh, one of the only head coaches that made the jump from college to the NFL and had success and then decided to go back to college, uh, there's no denying that he would be a great head coach for the Chicago Bears. You know, he was drafted by them, and he loves the city of Chicago. I just don't know if that's quite realistic. Obviously, if the Bears do interview him, I will, I will jump ship, and I will get head over heels and probably get my heart broken. But as of right now, I'm going to leave Jim Harbaugh off my realistic list of hopeful head coaching candidates. So now saying all that, you're probably wondering, Mbone, who do you think or who would you like to be the next head coach of the Chicago Bears? And for me, it comes down to two people. It comes down to Brian Flores, right, and Byron Leftwich. And at that point, it's defense, offense. What direction do you want to go? If you get Brian Flores, I, I think you have to build a really strong offensive staff around him. He's going to take care of defense, and I think players will play hard for him. Uh, I do, however, worry about offense and the success and the development of Justin Fields. And that, on the flip side, is why I want Byron Leftwich, because I think Byron Leftwich will be a phenomenal offensive-minded head coach for not only Justin Fields, but our young offense, David Montgomery, Darnell Mooney, those type of guys. And it's not like the Bears have a bad defense, so we don't necessarily need to go in the defensive-minded. Either guy I would love and I'd be very, very happy with. Um, being a Bears fan, I'm expected disappointment, but those are my two favorite head coaching candidates for guys that we are currently interviewing. Let me know your thoughts. Give me your comments down below. Who would you like to see be the next head coach of the Chicago Bears? And until next time, I will talk to you guys soon. Peace.